My work as a travel journalist has taken me to 51 countries around the world where I've seen colorful and captivating landscapes, scenery that can only be described as gorgeous. But take a look out here at the beautiful and yes, awesome Palos Verdes Peninsula. A long time ago, a group of people, one might even call them visionaries, decided to save it. Not only for today, but for generations to come. Take a listen to what some of them have to say about all this and the organization that made it possible, the Palos Verdes Peninsula Land Conservancy. A hundred years from today, somebody's going to drive by this place and say, how in the world does this ever get saved <laughs> from what's right. gone all around That's it? Right. And look yeah. how beautiful it is. Yeah. Yeah, I first came here in the 50s as a kid when my grandma took me to marine land. At that point, there were thousands of acres probably of, of open space and farmland. And all of us living in the area gradually saw that disappear. And here was Bill Ayler coming forward with something else. He was asking that we work together with the cities, the county, and to work with the developers, and to also ask from us as citizens that we participate in something that was bigger than what we were, a, an organization that could try to save that open space. So I got on the Planning Commission in Rolling Hills Estates and uh, found that uh, people really did hate losing this land. That you know these people would come in with development proposals before the Planning Commission and uh, people said that you know we really understand the person has a right to develop this land but isn't there some way we could we could preserve it. The Conservancy has done such a great job with, with their education. Now everyone knows what native habitat is. They started with this third grade program teaching third graders and taking them out in the environment to tell them what a native plant is and what it, um, how to recognize invasive plants. We asked for parent volunteers for our field trip. Uh, for the Palos Verde schools, it's very easy to find a trail next to the school or, or down the block. Uh, for the uh, out-of-district schools, we uh, bus them to George F. Canyon. Yeah, it's, it's like a, a sort of a miracle in, in Palos Verdes where the, the property is so valuable. This was, I guess, when I worked the hardest and enjoyed it the most. And uh, when uh, we were trying to purchase uh, the uh, Portuguese bin preserve, I was asked to be the uh, coordinator for the neighborhood uh, to um, match the uh, more than a million dollar grant that uh, the Annenbergs had uh, given to the Conservancy. And so uh, it was called Fulfill the Dream. The purpose of it was to uh, bring in as many people as possible into this effort, not only for the money that was needed, of course, but so that the peninsula would be united in this effort. The cities were behind this because they knew what would happen if the developers uh, were allowed to start work uh, in this area. And of course, the city, the first thing um, the newly incorporated RPV did was to put a moratorium on the land and restrict it to a half acre. So that was the beginning. I lost my husband in 2003 and I was uh, looking for a way to honor him and there was a, a newspaper article, the Peninsula News and the Daily Breeze. Uh, the Palos Verdes Land Conservancy had an acquisition in progress and we're looking for donations. And by giving a certain amount, you could have a trail or a, or a site named after or dedicated to someone. And uh, I decided to do that, but I really moved on it once I heard that Annenberg would have a match grant. And I gave them a substantial donation. And uh, about two years later, the cool overlook became uh, beautiful. Uh, that is in honor of my husband. Well, actually, it was my husband who got interested. We, had, we raised five children on the peninsula. And so when he heard that uh, the city was going to be formed in order to preserve that space, we, we moved in when it was still county area. And uh, so there wasn't, you know, a, a city. So um, he wanted to help. So he wrote a check for $100,000 wow. for to preserve the conservancy. Because we've been able to attract literally thousands of volunteers. Every year we get around 15,000 volunteer hours and that's really the lifeblood of our organization. I, I shamelessly recruit from everywhere I go 
and I never turn down a volunteer. I'll find something for them to do. There's an empty piece of land in San Pedro called White Point Park that used to belong to the U.S. Army. 1973 to the late 90s, was almost 30 years, it sat there empty, overrun with weeds, with a rusty old chain link fence around it. All of a sudden, all sorts of people come forward with brilliant ideas of what to do with the land. Then Councilman Rudy Savornich formed a task force to study what to do. And so I was on the task force and we listened to everybody's proposals and a woman named Leah Marinkovic from San Pedro was aware of the Land Conservancy. I was vaguely aware of it, but I'd never been involved with it. And she reached out to the Land Conservancy and said, what if we could put this into the Land Conservancy and make a nature preserve out of it? Would we be interested? And Bill Ayler said, absolutely, and we will restore the habitat there at no cost to the city. He said, well, I'm getting a lot of political pressure. He was, too, from every direction, from all the interests who had designs on the land. And he said, my task force has recommended a nature preserve, and so I guess that's what we're going to do. An organization like ours can't do it alone. A lot of the grants that we would get, the funding, would have to come through a city. And so we had to, had, it was a partnership and always has been. I, I actually looked at the minutes uh, of what all goes into working together and maintaining the preserve and improving the preserve and it's it's quite amazing so it's a great partnership it's been working terrifically just a wonderful resource for for residents of today and well into the future there was a wonderful illustration today it was a, a group of students from the inner city of Los Angeles who come down and this is the fifth year I was told that they've been here and those children would never have seen the ocean before. The benefits that open space provides are numerous. It, it can range from really personal, from uh, it being something that someone feels that they're able to find serenity or to feel refreshed or rejuvenated by being in open space, um, exercise. It, it lends, it helps to provide clean air to our communities. It's the um, open landscapes with the non-permeable surfaces through the nature preserves helps the water quality in our area. Um, it's natural flood control, things like that. The cities are growing so fast and the population is growing so fast that pretty soon there won't be any open space except maybe, you know, at least in our area in California. And here we have a chance to, to save some of that space for everybody to enjoy. You see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that uh, appreciate the, the natural beauty of the area, the, the vistas that we have through, say, Portuguese Bend and the Palos Verdes Preserve, uh, the, the well-preserved habitat in places like Forestall, uh, riparian or river-based habitat in places like George F. Canyon. These are, are unique features and you have to go many miles to find something comparable. The one of the things we've done is we've preserved the land. But the land has, over the years, before we were able to get it, was used for farming, it was used for grazing cattle, so a lot of the habitat is gone. And so one of our uh, charges is now to replant, revegetate those areas with native plants. We actually have a nursery that handles a lot of the, that grows these things, and so we have a very active program for doing that. This, this place could be even more beautiful if we're able to really restore what was here thousands of years ago. Anyone who comes to Palos Verdes, um, when we drive through and I talk about all the, the, the wonderful resources we have here and we talk about the preserve, they are just amazed when they drive by and, and, and realize that this is uh, saved for use by residents and guests in perpetuity. It's, it's something that they are very pleased by.